Happy Thursday, yeah. everybody. <laughs> Aloha. That's Aloha. Hello and welcome to episode Sounds 34 good. of Carvers and Creators, a weekly demonstration and discussion with pumpkin carvers, sculptors, and multi-talented artists. We humbly ask that you please consider giving us a like and a follow on the platform that you're watching us on. And please let us know in the comments where you're watching from and if you have any questions for the Carvers and our special guest. My name is Michael Mondragon. I'll be running the show, moderating comments, and chiming in from time to time. Let's meet the Carvers. First, he is an artist and sculptor from Boston, Massachusetts. He is a 2019 champion of Food Network's Outrageous Pumpkins, Paul Dever. Hey, happy Thursday. Paulie. Hi, guys. Welcome. welcome. How are you? Next, he is a multimedia sculpture artist from Tucson, Arizona, and a finalist on Halloween Wars 2019 on the Food Network, Matt Harper. Hey. Matty. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> and our guest today is a specialist in sculpture, mold making, medical trainers, museum displays, and painting from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Please welcome the multi-talented Christian Hansen. Welcome. Yeah. All right. Hey, Chris. Thanks I'm wearing a different on. shirt, so I'm all set. Yes. <laughs> so uh, last week was uh, viewer's choice, and it was a, um, was it an aggravated leprechaun or? Devious. Devious. Yeah. Devious. Devious. We, yeah. You know what? We should really write that down. I know. <laughs> I think it's my job. I think it's my job. Why start now, Mickey? Why start now? Yeah. Yeah. It would I love only, it. Uh, it would only make things uh, much more seamless. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Matt, well, well, this is absolutely awesome. Love it. Thank you. So yeah, I had a really, I, I had a really tall one. And so when we started carving last time, I'm like, wait, what do leprechauns look like? Okay. I got the beard, but the hat was kind of throwing me for loop. So I, I just, so if you can see the very top is the little, uh, you know, stem part of it and everything else, just, if you just picture a round shape from there and I just kind of carved a little hat out of it. Anyway, I, I, the the fun part is, is the back of it. I, I cut the ears and the pipe out, so it's it's almost, um, you know, it's it's not prime time ready if you look at it from the back. So I think it came. That's you, where you got the pipe, though. Yeah, from the back. Yeah. Yeah, you're so good at add. You've added like tops to a couple of them now, and you're so good at it. Like the the super the superhero Z's, shit like oh, that. Oh, you yeah, yeah, yeah. you figure out a way. To, to incorporate the entire thing. It's pretty impressive, buddy. That's Thanks. that's a good one. The eyebrows, everything. There was absolutely no gourd wasted. That's all <laughs> all used, 100%. Nope, nope. there's no kind right. of footprint. That's right, yeah. I mean, Tobacco is the sustainable. shaving. Sustainable. That's, that's the word I'm going for, yeah. Very nice, very nice, man. Thanks, guys. Well, let's look at uh, Paul's from last week. This is, oh, <laughs> the, the nose is like, oh my gosh. Like what? How awesome is that the skin texture on there? Well, he's yeah. got the gin blossom, right? He is. He's an Irishman. <laughs> That's why he's so devious. He's hammered, right? He he has no idea what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Well, I, the thing I love about this one, Paula, I don't think I've ever seen you do like a nose and a mouth combo that way, where it's like that. It's that perfect. You know, you know the old people that used to be able to pull their whole lower lip up up their nose. <laughs> That's kind of where I thought this. I was anyway. I love it. I just love his eyes and his. Yeah, the whole the whole thing's awesome. Uh, thanks, yeah. buddy. Not my yeah, favorite expression. In my in my long line of butternut squash carvings, it's not one of my favorites. But I, it's, I, 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 it was a bit. It was just a busy week to try and throw him in there. So I'm glad I got the gin blossom. That was really when when it got chosen for a leprechaun. I'm like, whatever he looks like, he's gonna be a rummy. He's gonna it's have that exactly. little blue Is the rim of the hat? Is that all? Is that a separate added piece, or is that? Yeah, I had to chop up another okay. one and could just. Awesome. I ran out of space. I'm I'm not as good as Matt with adding like oh, complete chapeaus to my um my carvings. <laughs> well, yeah. um, um, Matt and I grew up in Phoenix, Arizona, and around it had our teenage and twenties in uh, Tempe, a big band during that time, the Jim Blossoms. How about oh, that? Right on. How about that? Nice all comes full circle, right? Exactly. Just like my nose will be about a year or two. Yeah. <laughs> now, Christian, you're going to be carving with us tonight, correct? That's the idea. Yeah. Okay. We'll see what happens? But all awesome. right. 
Well, I'd right. like to introduce you to. The... I don't know how much carved sculpting will happen, but. <laughs> oh yeah, right. This will not well, be edible, I think, after the, the the end of the show. Well, I'd like to introduce you to the fourth member of Carvers and Creators. It is the hollow wheel, the center spinner, uh, which will determine what we carve tonight. So let's uh, let's go over to uh, Paul, and he's going to explain that. All right. So for those who haven't seen it before welcome this is the wheel so we're going to spin it once we're going to get our subject for the evening second time is going to be the emotion that we have to try and apply to the said subject we have replaced a couple of items because devious was getting repetitive that we should probably put repetitive on the board because <laughs> it's come up just as much so we've swapped out a couple of things uh we got rid of pirate we threw an old age um Sulking is a new expression, and we have uh, two, two, crazy. Crazy is yeah. a good one. I don't, we haven't done crazy in a while. Yeah. But yeah, there's some good choices on here. I, I like, I I'm hoping for a circus yeah. freak. You know, this, I'm not too upset with any of these choices until it lands on it, and then I go, ah. Why that one? That's the point of the wheel, right? If, you, if you're comfortable, what's the point? Yeah. You know, so let's give it a whirl and see what we get. Reptile. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you get what you you know, you, you get what you ask for sometimes. <laughs> An exasperated reptile. Write it wow. down, Mickey, because I'm gonna forget it and Mickey, I just forgot. We're never gonna remember that one. Exasperated. So what's another adjective for uh, synonym for exasperated? Uh, uh, fed up. I Fed up. They had to. Okay. Tired. Like that. Tired. Tired. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Confused. Like the look on my face right now. Yeah. Like what? <laughs> oh I'm boy. Just hoping that I spelled it right uh, when I'm putting it in here. I'm gonna actually look it up. Jeez, Louise. What do we yep. do this? What? What's? Why do we do this to us? Paul. Paul. Think about how many times you you've, you've seen an exasperated reptile walk by and you're like, ah, we should carve that. You know what's crazy? <laughs> it's reptiles are the only animals that just don't have any emotion on their face except for like evil. They always look <laughs> pissed off. <laughs> so exasperated is going to be pretty interesting. I have yeah, a couple yeah. squashes to choose from. I don't know if this one really reads reptile to me, but yeah. Mm -hmm. man. All right. So if you're carving with us at home, um, we're going to give you five minutes to grab your tools, pumpkin, squash, anything else that is perishable that you can carve on. Um, but we're actually uh, wow. going to do our tradition here. And uh, I'll start with you, Christian. Uh, what are you drinking tonight? Uh, oh, let's yeah. see. Well, this is a local beer here in the Twin Cities, Minnesota. Uh, Fair State Brewing's Party Forward IPA. Kill it, I man. thought I'd give it a try. It's a little uh, lighter maybe than I, I generally drink, but uh, it is good. If it's lighter, right. what, what, what exactly is it? Is it? What's the alcohol content? Uh, I, you know, it is, uh, there's some, you should have asked him before he had seven. I would say seven. I'm going to guess seven. <laughs> yeah. Let's just say, yeah. 6.0. Is that it? Oh, AD that's yep. 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 I was yeah. close enough. Easy IPA. Well, it seems yep. to be working. So I love it. That's it. <laughs> I love it. I'll have to check that one out. Uh, Matt, what do you got? So I went, I went with a, uh, Pilsner from across the border. Our friends from, uh, Bohemia. Bohemia. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Fancy bottles. Nice. Oh, yeah. It's got a gold foil on top. So you have a few of these. You're getting gold in your system. Somewhere. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Where was that's that right. last week when we were carving leprechauns? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, what do you got? Okay. So I have a Maine Brewing, uh, well, not Maine Brewing, but it's Mass Landing Brewing from Maine called All the Way Up. It's a sour ale brewed with blackberries, limes, and lactose. I don't know why you need lactose, but lactose. it's only 4.8 by volume. Nope. I'm being good tonight. So is it like a dark kind of milky beer? or It's a hazy. It looks okay. like a – It's it's got that hazy – Lactose. Yeah, it's oh, not I too see. bad. Okay. It might be – yeah, it might be – I was thinking the lactose is probably makes it a little sugary. I don't know. It's got to be the sweetness because there's another – I think Definitive Brewing in Maine has like a couple of beers called Vanilla Dome that has vanilla and – Gotcha. Fruit yeah, and that's probably thing. it. I pour it on my cereal just to be safe. <laughs> <laughs> like a real man, right? 
Uh, my beer tonight is actually I'm wearing the uh, the, the Stone, Stone Road, oh, uh, shirt. Nice. And so I have uh, the Exotic Destinations, um, a seven point five uh, uh, IPA. Oh, IPA. And, uh, a hop oh. field journey. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Nice. I can't stuff. wait to see where this journey takes you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm excited to hear about your journey. Hopefully yeah. not. Well, 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 we're gonna we're gonna wait journal it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm probably get, just gonna journey from here to, to over there, uh, and then back over here. Um, back to the so fridge to get yeah, another that's one. What I've been doing for the last year, right? <laughs> right. So, so what are you gonna do here? Okay. Hey. Yeah. So, uh, Christian, where are you gonna start on yours? Are you gonna um, are you just gonna <laughs> dig in? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess I'll peel it, and then uh, hopefully I will get some sort of inspiration. Uh, maybe a side view may, might be interesting. Yeah, yeah maybe I'll try that. I don't know yeah, about the. Like I don't know how much expression I'm going to get, but we'll see. Plus, I think I'll be talking, so uh, I might be a little distracted. Well, yeah. Well, well, let's get that going. I mean, you're really kind of no stranger, maybe uh, a stranger to uh, the butternut squash, but the uh, you've been doing pumpkins for quite yeah. some time. Yeah, I started probably uh, five or six years ago. I got into pumpkin carving. And uh, that's the most recent one. I think that was from 2019. Every, there's a horror convention show here in uh, Minneapolis, in St. Paul, uh, called Crypticon. And so every year I'll, I'll try to do a, a horror character that is related to one of the, the stars that's signing autographs and such at the show. So Doug Bradley was was there in 2019. So I did the Hellraiser tribute. I did a Linda Blair, which I think you might have a picture of. Yeah. That one's right. I that's saw that one. And, so yeah, every year that's kind of been my tradition is doing a carving for the show, and uh, and I just put it on display just to add to the atmosphere and fun of the show. It's pretty amazing. Six degrees of carvers and creators, real quick. Mike Regan, guest of the show was in mo most of the Hellraiser films and did the makeup. Mm -hmm. Right, Mike effects, Mickey? Yep. Yep, yep. And he uh, he did it not, not for the early ones, right, with the, more of the later ones, but still, that's pretty amazing. And yeah, he was, and he acted in it as well. Which he was an actor in it as well, yeah. Pretty yeah. awesome. And he's a, he's a pumpkin carver? He's a, he's a uh, geez, what doesn't he do? He's He does a lot of effects, makeup, and um, most, Recently, he's doing a lot of the uh, clay pottery stuff too. Yeah, I'd probably recognize the stuff if I if I saw it. But oh yeah, I don't recognize the name. But his his IMDb is longer than anything I'll ever post on uh, on on Instagram. He's got <laughs> pages and pages of movies you bet he's done. It's pretty awesome. Is anybody else uh, exasperated by the? Uh, Daunting task of a reptile. Right <laughs> yeah, I don't even know where the hell to start. I, don't, I forget what I, I forgot what reptiles look like. Apparently, I like point. reptiles. You know, I guess it's all about putting a bunch of scale. Sorry, I'm shaking the camera because my iPad is. Maybe I'll move that. It's on my my sculpture table here. Oh, I have so much stuff keeping my table from rocking right now. It's so rough. Better. Good lord. Yeah, I think the wheels. The wheels not so on screen. So when we do reptile, we're not we're not gonna go. I'm at least in my brain. I, I'm not. Gonna, I'm thinking rep, reptilian. So reptilian, alien, yeah, reptilian. Alien with a reptilian kind of look, right? Boy, you're oh, really looking at the lion. Oh, thanks, man. The of, uh, interpretation there, huh? Well, Ro robots are uh, reptilian as well, right? Can I do a robot? Yeah. Reptilian robot. Yeah, why not? It's one of the same. Yeah. It's funny, it reminds me of what my band used to do when somebody would come up and request a song that we didn't do. We would call out a song that we did do and go, they covered that song that you wanted, but we're going to play this song instead. So close enough. <laughs> Exasperated Reptiles, Captain Kirk Pone. That's right. Exasperated Reptiles. That's true. That That's good. absolutely true. Yep. Um, gotta... Hmm. All right, damn it. <laughs> I don't know where to start. Yeah. But, uh, oh, a good point focusing here. on the the, uh, the scraping part. That's yeah, yeah exactly. That's, that's I'm pretty, I'm pretty feeling very confident about that. <laughs> you can't go wrong with the scrape. The dragons are reptiles too, that so that's that's a good point that's as well. True. Dragons are reptiles. 
Um, Sleep stacks turtles. are reptile. Turtles, lizards, Gila monsters. Oh, yeah, Matt, you're pretty uh, familiar with that. Yeah, I'll just throw, throw one of those up. Yeah, here we go. Gila monsters. Wow, but, but how to how to orient the head, right? Do I go do I go long? Do I go like this and do um, you know Thank you, Brandon. crocodile, or do I go up and down? Yeah, well, I, 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 I blame something. Oh, that is so good. Yeah. How close were you to busting through on that one? Because you really got some depth. Oh, yeah. A very, very, very close. That was as far as I could go uh, on that that area that's by the... Uh, the chin? I the guess it would be her, her right, the side of her face. Yeah, that was yeah. that was uh, very flimsy. By the time the eyes were outstanding. Oh, yeah, you really pulled the eyes off. a different way of doing the eyes, too. Great job, man. That's yeah, you know, I used a, uh, a brass tube to kind of... Uh, you know, cut in that circle, and then yeah, uh, yeah, and then I just cut away at it a little bit. To... Yeah, I don't know if I put highlights in on that one. I may not have. I don't think it needed it. it I mean, it, it reads exactly what it's supposed to. Even the um, uh, the flare around the skin breaks was mm -hmm. awesome. It's genius. Well, thank you. Yeah, that that was uh, one of the things I've found when I'm when I've done something like this where there's some element of a portrait what's nice about pumpkins to me is it I, I do feel like it's so much more forgivable than doing clay work because because it's a pumpkin every everything can tends to have a little bit of a pumpkin-esque quality to it maybe it's a little fuller it's a little bit more rounded just because of the nature of what you're working on yeah uh, so i kind of just i just let it be you know like uh, i am in my other work, I am a little bit of a perfectionist, I guess. And uh, any portrait work I've done, I really, you know, I'll go over it and over and over it. Um, what's what for one of the things for me with the pumpkins? It's been very liberating in that because it's so such a limited medium. You know, you're sort of forced to just accept what the pumpkin's going to allow you to do, the limitations and the thickness of the pulp and so forth. Uh, yeah, so for me, it, it, it kind of helps to relax my perfectionism and just let the thing happen as it's going to happen and let it be a little yeah. pumpkin-ish. A little pumpkin-ish. I like that. That's a yeah, good slogan. Yeah, that makes sense. It does. It does well. Coming me up with excuses. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, That's it's enjoyable. Good. Damn, these reptiles. Nice. That's a great so that one. one I, I love that. Wow. Um, I did a demo at the Mall of America here a few years ago, um, and so it's it's themed Nickelodeon Playland or something. So I you know had to choose Nickelodeon characters, which was fun. It was a fun change of pace too, since I'm used to doing horror and zombies and skulls and, yeah. and very realistic stuff. Uh, this was an interesting challenge to try to get a little bit of the three quarter, and I wanted to do a. a an angle on it that wasn't you know just straight on i wanted to get some of that kind of illustrated quality so i chose this picture that was you know slightly uh you know three That's quarters good. yeah perspective uh yeah so the one tip uh of the corner there of the cheese uh that was added on okay pumpkin, and the nose was added on a little bit i was going to ask you about that it, it looks uh i was gonna say that's very impressive to do it at that angle and then have it look at, uh, but it was actually uh, put together, correct? Coming off the canvas there. I like that. Yeah, it's Coming really, off really the impressive. Canvas. Yeah, like, I, I think that's a fun aspect of pumpkin carving is is doing this kind of bas-relief approach. You know, you're not doing a full in the round sculpture necessarily. Yeah. Um, you know, and I'm not an illustrator. I used to draw when I was a kid, but it's a skill I haven't developed uh, very, very far. So it's it's fun to get to kind of get pushed into this sort of work that's a little bit more illustrative. It has a little bit more of that demand on it. Yeah, that's that's killer. Cool. I love it. <laughs> that one's okay too. You know, that was that was one of my early ones. I think that was maybe the second year, or yeah, I think it was the second year that I was pumpkin carving. And it's if you don't recognize him, it's uh, supposed to be Tor Johnson from Plan Nine from Outer Space. Oh, and sure. So forth. Uh, 
Yeah, and you know, another thing, my, my attitude about doing this too is, again, like doing a character or a likeness, I'm not, re you know, like I'm not trying to make it like a photo, photo realistic portrait. I sort of like that because it's in a pumpkin, you kind of have to make it work for the shape of the pumpkin also. You know, I think it might look even a little bit odd if it was a completely photorealistic, proportionally uh, portrait. Right. Uh, there's, I think the pumpkin kind of gives, it almost forces you to give it a certain amount of warmth because of the subject, because it's the, the medium's round and, uh, and it has those limitations. Oh, yeah. It's su super impressive. What did you use for the glint in the eyes on that one? That was... Uh, I think a couple of, I think I cut out uh, rectangular, you know, shafts and just stuck those in there. Oh, so it is pumpkin. Wow. It is pumpkin. Yeah. It, yeah. It reads as white. It, it's really, yeah. yeah. Love it. That's Jeez, an huh? exasperated human. I could, I could do that. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. I really, I really love expression sculpture. I think I have a bit of a knack for it. So. Uh, yeah, you do. Another thing I really love about doing pumpkin carving is it's so, it's so, so it, it's such a great way to convey expressive faces and and character. I think that's part of what you know excites people when they see this stuff is that you know they they know what a pumpkin is and then they see it, a face in it and that looks alive and like it's about to speak or something. Right, right. So you can really exaggerate too. I think it has a bit of a character. It's it's open or it's welcoming to caricature type work which I have a lot of fun with. Oh yeah. It's so much, it, it, there's so much more freedom. You're not even, you're not tied down to anatomy or anything. You can make up your own. Yeah. And for me, that's a real good break because that's, that's the kind of stuff I've mostly focused on is trying to get really accurate anatomy and, you know, kind of going that, at sculpture from that angle. So the pumpkin stuff's a real break, you know, it's like, I can just play and have fun and, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. I can just let it be kind of crazy and, goofy even and mm -hmm. yeah so I, I it really was like super liberating a few years ago when i started pumpkin carving it's just like so it's when like, did, when did you start pumpkin? like i can just have fun with sculpture yeah when, when did you actually start with pumpkins because i know for many years like uh from what i remember you, you you've done clay and and i know you've even done like you know really really realistic um you know uh medical grade kind of studies and stuff like that. I want to hear more about that, but when did you first jump into pumpkins with those feet? I think it was, I think it was maybe 2015 or so. Uh, okay. Yeah. You know, Ray Villafane was doing a display at the mall of America here in Bloomington, oh, Minnesota, wow. which is just outside of the twin cities. I heard about it on Facebook and I sent a message saying, Hey, I'm in town. I could help if you need an assistant or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and surprisingly they responded and, uh, and I got to meet Ray and, and, uh, talk to him about carving. He didn't know I was a sculptor or anything until I met him and eventually showed him my portfolio and my iPad. Okay. And, uh, it was really flattering as he, with, as he was looking through my pictures, he recognized a few of me. He said, Oh, we have those as part of our like reference more, like some of the expression sculpture work I had done. Oh, wow. So uh, that was, that was really fun. And, uh, so I thought we hit it off fairly well. And, uh, and I asked him at one point, cause I was really interested in, in the subject. And so he was in the middle of doing some carvings for the display. And I asked him if I could just kind of shadow him and watch him work in his hotel as he was carving like a Nosferatu uh, pumpkin. And so I sat there for a few hours watching him and kind of taking mental notes and just kind of getting my head around the process. And uh, I remember at the time I was sitting there and I had this moment where I thought, oh my God, like I have to do it now. Like here I got this like, you know, some one-on-one -on -one seminar from this guy who's amazing at carving pumpkins. I can't just be like, Oh, I never got around to it, you know. So, yeah, right. Right. So it kind of forced me, and I was very, very intimidated to try it out. I just thought it was just so different from what I was used to. Yeah. Um, but then once I did, I felt really like I was really surprised at how uh, how easily I was able to transfer the stuff I already knew to that, you know, subtractive type sculpture. That's, so that's uh, cool. yeah, it's. I ever since then, I've I've been. I love carving pumpkins. <laughs> I didn't get a chance How to do it not? over the quarantine year. It just wasn't, I, I, I kind of need to have, a, I like having like a public avenue or 
you know, some reason to do it where people are going to see it other than Instagram and such, I yeah. guess that was, that was, I guess that's why I didn't, I don't know why I didn't do one this year, but, but it is a lot of fun. Yeah. You've done, you've done tons of other things with pumpkins outside. I mean, actually the pumpkins that, uh, I, 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 for those of you guys who don't know, if you've ever heard of petrified pumpkins, that was, that's Christian's baby and i know mickey's got stuff to show us with that and so does christian but um what i loved about some of that stuff look at that yeah that's so cool it's it just it's a it's the it's the really great combination of of uh this this fun medium of taking and creating a human face in, in the pumpkin so it's very relatable but it's for the for the folks who just want to you know, have kind of a DIY instant kit and 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 have it be perfect every time. This is a this was a great a great idea, Chris. I just I I followed this for a long time. I just think it's it's phenomenal. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I'm actually, I, I'm mad I didn't think of it first. Yeah, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I uh, at the time the 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 professional right. work I was doing had a lot of uh, there was a lot of molding and casting of translucent materials, urethanes and such. When I met Ray and he was doing his display, my idea was, well, what if we made kind of background pieces that you could kind of have in storage and then you could have this big display with all of these seemingly carved pumpkins kind of in the background and then you'd have the live carver up front. And so okay. you'd have, you know, and I think the public, even if they knew those were uh, synthetic, uh, would still, I don't think people really care uh, that much on to that level the way that we as artists do. So no. I just thought it'd be a great way to make like a big display and augment like the live carving that was going on. But then I kind of thought, well, maybe this could be a product or something. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I got as far as kind of making some prototypes and kind of getting the idea out there. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. We'll see, I guess, but it's fun to do it's i really like i love the I, i'm a big halloween fanatic you know and uh i love the idea of some product that's affordable in stores where people could basically have a you know a type of carving something that you'd have to hire an artist to do which you know of course isn't really feasible for most people um but something you would just cut a hole out of the pumpkin basically so what it is is i don't know if it's that obvious there but it's a uh that's a plastic cast. So it's tinted plastic that's meant to look like pumpkin meat that's been mm -hmm. carved. And the idea is that, a, that someone would have that in their collection and you would merely just cut out the silhouette and you stick that piece in and now you have what looks like a, you know, a pumpkin, a genuine pumpkin carving for your Halloween oh. display or parties or what have you. Yeah. Is there, so any, cool. is there any flex to it at all or is it just a hard urethane yeah uh, it's, it's it's one of the smooth on urethanes i think it's yeah. uh but it, yeah it has like a slight uh flex to it 57 d oh. i think but it's yeah it has a little bit so if you drop it it doesn't shatter right but uh, okay you know and it, it's just the one i kind of went toward i think there's a lot of options that i might still explore in the years to come oh it's great man it's such a good idea and and nice. they light they, they light as well right i mean We've talked about it before where you, gener you generally don't light a sculpted pumpkin from the inside. You would light it from the outside to cast shadow. But you yeah. also you also do the the negative work with, with this new style that you got as well, too, right? Yeah, you know, everyone I talked to about this idea uh, would say, well, can you light it? Or where? how does it look when it's lit? And I thought, yeah. you know, I'm thinking, like, it's not supposed to be lit. Right. <laughs> but, you know, I thought, yeah. well, just go along with it. If that's what they want, you know, see it. So because it's an even cast, you know, it's basically an even thickness. Um, for whatever, you know, the way it ends up looking when you backlight it is it ends up looking like a photo negative of the sculpture. Um, so, you know, it's more successful on some designs than others, but it's, it's a pretty neat effect just for the sculpted faces. The intention, though, is to be like the, the pumpkin carvings that people have seen, where it's, you know, exterior lit. That's one of now, the biggest questions. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, is, is this one of them or is this so this is a one? Yeah. So this is a whole different kind of branch idea from that, which was... Um, where it's it's what's called a lithophane it's it's a piece of again it's the same same sort of uh setup it's a plastic insert 
So it's a plastic piece that um, one would just cut a hole out of the pumpkin to match the silhouette. You stick that in and then with, with a light inside the pumpkin, you see this image. And the image is made by the thickness or thinness of the material. Okay. So I'm able to go in ZBrush and the computer and there's other ways to do it, but create a lithophane, which is you basically just apply a photo and the, the computer interprets the dark colors as, you know, leaving the, the surface as is, <coughs> excuse me, and, they, and it interprets the light colors as depth. So essentially it carves out the depth. And there's a lot of artists out there who do this, you know, in real pumpkins or in synthetic pumpkins by hand, which is spectacular stuff people do. Um, oh, yeah. And, you know, I'm, I do tend to lean toward the, you know, hand crafted work. Uh, Cause this really is a process. It's not a artistic endeavor. I'm not hand carving these. So it's really, a, it's, it's just another way of to, dis to display an image. So mm -hmm. I think what I what I felt like I accomplished in that was that I created the process to make one of these. It's amazing. It it looks so three D. That's I I what I to, love about yeah. it. Yeah, it's it's sort of hard to convey to people. So I think I have this. I think this is that one. Let's see. Here we go. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. So this is what it looks like in you know the raw when it's not backlit. So it's a piece of plastic. You can kind of you know. It's somewhat translucent here. I have this kind of serrated edge here, which was the idea is to help people to transfer the silhouette onto the surface. Oh, good idea. So oh, beautiful. Basically, like, you know, hammer that. it on, and then you have this outline you can cut out. But then oh, let's see if I have smart. to get my little light set up here. But then once it's, you know, the thing is it looks like, it just looks like nothing really. But then when it's backlit, all of a sudden you see the image wow. again. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's great. Instantly, yeah. So that's yeah, that's so I call those Jack illusions. Jack illusions, trademark. Yep, <laughs> you heard it here first. Don't go jumping. So any on photo. It. That's what, what's cool is now that I have the setup. You know, uh, any photo can be turned into one of these. Oh yeah. Have, okay. You know, I have like a standardized uh, shape for the the silhouette, the molds. I've got at least pieces that all key together it's all standardized okay um and then i have a formula too for the to tint the resin wow so it's really just a matter of applying the applying the image in the computer and it's really just like a drag and drop it's a fairly yeah. simple process then it goes through a, a print so i have a they call it an fdm printer but it's the kind that most people are familiar with that, you know, it goes back and forth and basically draws out a little piece of plastic in a line and okay. over like these usually take about 20. The initial piece is about 20 some hours, 24 hours or so wow. straight oh, okay. printing. But once okay. I have that print, then I make a mold of that print that's uh, that's connected to the, the silhouette piece. Um, oh, yeah, they're opposite and then once yeah. that's molded, so like here's the silhouette piece. So I modeled this piece. Oop. Okay. So this is a piece. So you know the idea was that that they're all they all are based on this silhouette. Okay. And um, so yeah, as long as I make it fit within that, they're all the same. It's kind of a standardized approach. And anyways, this this is why this is why I didn't carve any pumpkins last year because I was doing all this stuff. And You're a little bit busy. like crazy. And... <laughs> but it's it's still pumpkin related. Yeah, it's still, I feel like it's part of the pumpkin canon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, canon, nice. It fits. The thing I like about the uh, the serrated part, I was really thinking, I'm like, what happens if you're, you're, you know, you're at home and you really like the face, then you carve a hole that's just a little too big and you've now ruined the pumpkin, you know? So I think that's so smart that you thought about that punch out because everybody that, that takes the little, the little um, you know, the supermarket, uh, you stick them to them and you poke holes in it and then you cut along those holes, you know, I think yeah. so everyone's used to that. So you know, I think it's a really smart idea to give them kind of an automatic uh, template for it. Yeah, it was a real challenge when I was, I've, I've been thinking this out for the last few years. And, and one of the challenges was, you know, how do you make a, how do you make a template when you can't print it on paper? Cause that's going to deform, you know, how do you make it a template that will be universal no matter what the shape of your pumpkin is or what have yeah. you? Um, yeah, and then the, the cookie cutter idea came to mind at some point. I realized, mm -hmm. like, well, a cookie cutter is going to cut the same hole out, 
no matter what the shape is of the object that it's cutting. Mm -hmm. And it, yeah, it's worked. It's, you know, it's, uh, it does takes, it does take a little bit of care and cutting, but, um, so far it's worked pretty well for me. So I'll say that's really I think there's cool. Potential there anyways. I think Paul, did yeah, you have I'll a question say. from before? I forgot what it was. Ah. Come on, Paul. Jesus. Listen, I'm carving and talking. That's like <laughs> flattery. You didn't have some flattery. <laughs> It'll come back to me. Don't worry. It'll come back. To yeah. Me. Okay. Um, so, Christian, uh, how, how long have you been doing 3D work? Uh, probably since the late 90s. I, I kind of got oh, into wow. making uh, props and masks and stuff because of my Halloween fanatic thing. Mm -hmm. uh, late 90s or so. And it was, again, it was like, and I was, you know, one of these 20 somethings at that point where I didn't know what the hell I was going to do with myself. I have, I have a bachelor's degree in philosophy. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm like the king of the impractical education <laughs> you know, and interest. Yeah. Um, but the, I've, I've been, I was into makeup effects when I was in high school and I originally thought that would be my path, you know, and, uh, you know, and I've, so I've, and my whole, my whole career has been kind of going in this direction and that direction. I'll go, you know, I went into the museum display world for a while. I did that for like 10 years oh. and a lot of interesting stuff there. And I got into the medical simulation thing about six years ago. Wow. So a lot of things that are kind of peripheral or they're, they're related to my original interest, which is makeup effects. And I've done some makeup effects work. You know, I never moved to LA. I've always stayed here in the Midwest and, so I didn't get, you know, as deep into that as I think, uh, you know, I, maybe I could have, but, uh, but I, I've always done work related to that. And I've always had a little bit of a, a foot in the world of, you know, either mask making or, you know, monster sculptures or makeup effects type stuff. Mm -hmm. um, did you, you said ZBrush that you were working in, uh, did you work in anything else like uh, Maya or Lightwave or? No, you know, and I was a real, uh, you know, on the different message boards for makeup effects people and sculptors and mask people. I, I was total Luddite computer hater <laughs> and mm -hmm. I still am a little bit, especially when I'm trying to learn some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I totally come at this stuff from a practical clay and wax and rubber mold making world. Um, but I, I, over the years I've, I've come to think, you know, I really need to, try this stuff out and learn how to do some basic modeling and zebra thinking, well, that's definitely the future. And, and in a way, you know, really seeing like, uh, I guess the writing on the wall that if I don't adapt to these new, the software and get some of these skills that, you know, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get any work. Um, right. So the, actually the, you know, the quarantine, and the pandemic, that was my big opportunity to, uh, you know, I had, I would, I had the time, so it was like, well, let's let's try to tackle this thing, and uh, oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I started last year with ZBrush, learning that, and and I had been kind of playing around with three the three D printing and uh, some of the CAD program Fusion three hundred and sixty. Okay. Um, there's there's another aspect of my interest that that seems to gravitate toward that sort of work, um, the you know making precision models and mechanical parts and so forth. It really interests me. I'm not necessarily like great at it, but, but I, I really uh, enjoy it. I really enjoy learning how to make pieces that, you know, where there's a, there's a threading and it, you know, just figuring all that out and designing it. I really like designing and, and then seeing the results of an idea. Yeah. And then I, mixing I, that with my sculpture and effects interest, which is kind of the, the petrified pumpkins and the Jack illusions thing. It's sort of this blending of all these interests I've had. Yeah, I, I, I went through a similar uh, phase, like around, like, I think like 2008, I was, uh, I kind of read the right in the wall that a lot of the, like, uh, branding and graphic design work I was doing w needed to be 3D. And um, so I got in, you know, I was a big um, uh, Andrew Kramer from, uh, uh, you know, he, he was doing a lot. Are you familiar with Andrew Kramer? Um, oh, gosh. Uh, I'm forgetting the the big thing that he's part of. He actually now does stuff with like uh, he was on, you know he was on uh, he was on Seinfeld Kramer. <laughs> not, not not that not that one. Different guy. <laughs> not the racist comic. Uh, the um, the um, uh, 
uh, video co-pilot is, is the thing that he does and now he works you know he does stuff for like jj abrams and stuff like that he's really super respected and and uh so during that time he was just doing tutorials online so i started getting into his stuff and um the one thing that it, it helped me do was it was it kind of got me into a world i didn't really know much about so i started learning about chamfered ev- edges and uh, booleans oh, and, sure. and you know it's like i started learning the technology or the the terminology and and yeah. really getting deep into it but i just wanted to make typography 3d basically so i kind of really found my you know what i was really passionate about and then trying to make that 3d and and uh exploring that so um and then when i started getting into this uh what matt and paul are doing and you know they've jumped me into it i'm super novice i haven't done very many things but the one thing that i, yeah. I liked about it was it really um spiked my creativity because i'm just like oh this is like you know the you know for me it was like the computer programs it was the 3d programs so i'm like oh this i mean this is like life this is 3d how how we see edges and how we see light and you know casting light it was it was it actually opened up a a different portal of my brain artistically do you find it's difficult to translate between what you know and the software that you use to the oh 100 percent Oh my gosh, I always want to transfer like stuff that I do like in Photoshop to yeah. uh, you know f- to 3D but that but then to life, you know, now it, you know a lot with like touch screens and all this other stuff, it's like you you can only do so many things like you can't use the Apple pencil on a laptop and you know so th- there's a lot of that type of like, you know, uh uh you have to and, th- and then when you're trying to do stuff like you go back to using just a pencil, you're just like, "Oh yeah, that's right. You can't like do the same things right. that you can do you're trying to hit some button on top of it or something or, uh, totally exactly yeah. i think it's, uh, it's funny because it's i think it's the opposite way it was for me anyways as someone who's immersed in the practical world so you know that's one of the things i find so bizarre and kind of interesting about transitioning from the practical world into the digital is there's so many things that for example in zbrush you can do that would be very very challenging and difficult to do with a with a clay model that's right. symmetry and you know some of the other stuff that it makes just so easy so it takes some some very difficult subjects and it makes them very easy conversely it takes things that are very easy like cutting a hole you know through something mm-hmm. and makes it this huge this big process where you got to like go through a big like an algorithm to figure out all the stages you have to go just to cut a hole and i did when i was first learning it i was thinking like why isn't there something that just cuts a hole in it my god right yeah. So it's yeah, it's like it's hard to transfer between those two worlds because it's a, such a different language too, like conceptually. Yeah, there's no there's no command or alt Z in uh, the real yeah. world. <laughs> so right, and then there's also no like little you know little ball of clay in ZBrush. You're like, why is no. it so difficult to just add a little ball of clay here? Or, you know, a little mesh. It's it's just a whole different way of thinking about form and sculpture and. So yeah, it was a bit of it was a bit of a struggle for me to get to it, but I'm yeah I feel fairly confident now. At least I'm I, on the way. I've got over the worst of of the uh, you know the learning curve. I think. Oh good good okay. I, th- there's actually a question here that's actually pretty intriguing. Uh, have you caught any shade from the purists and folks that hand carve uh, about your I, stuff that you do? Yeah, that's interesting. I I haven't. I could see. I think people like old friends of mine would be right to give me you know, give me shit about it. Uh, because I was, again, I, more than most of the people who were on these different forums, I have been somebody, I'm very like, basically very anti CGI and movies. I, I love practical effects. Um, yeah. So no, I haven't really, uh, I think, and, and for me, it, it too, it, it is something that I see it as a way to augment the practical stuff I do. I don't, I don't see it as a replacement. I don't want it. I only want it to replace the stuff I don't like to do practically, but um, yeah. I'm trying really hard to keep out of the mentality that, you know, that everything, every answer is in the digital world. You know, like for example, so for example, I did these, uh, these eyes. I've been, I've been trying to, or working on building forms to make fake eyes. So like, here's my fake eye. I don't know if you have, you know, cool. so this is just a, a test I did recently. Woo. So this is, you know, a, it's, wow. it's a, a clear so overcast of an me, internal please. eye. So these forms were all modeled in the CAD program. So the, the outer form that has the corneal bulge and such. 
and the inner form and the way everything's centered. You know, instead of doing that on the lathe or something, which I don't have that type of equipment, um, it's all done, you know, in a CAD software program, right? And then print it out. But, you know, there's things that like the, the resin printer doesn't do well. Like it doesn't, it doesn't create a, a glossy surface or, you know, um, so it's, so I, I use the software and the printer to the degree that they solve problems for me in the practical world, like how to machine something. I don't have a machine shop, you know, machinists can make these things and have made them in the past and that still do, I'm sure. But because I don't have access to that with the software and the printing, I can do the stuff, that kind of stuff, but I don't rely on it for everything. So a lot of it is just, once I have those forms, then it's all using a, you know, standard buffing wheel and using uh, the paints and using the resin itself as a, almost like a paint material rather than uh, only something that, that gets printed on the machine. So cool. Yeah. yeah. So in the same way, like, you know, I've done stuff where I'll, I'll maybe I'll print it. And then the idea is like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to cast it in wax. I'm going to play with it in wax or something or, so you, what if you, what do you do with this eye? So like you, you've made, you make, you're getting really good at perfecting these things. What do you, do you then take that eye um, and you sell that as its own sculpture or you're, you're, you want it to be a part of a larger like clay bodied sculpture that you do or what's the, or, or is it part of your like doing the medical um, stuff? It's, it it's more a matter of it's, it's a subject that I've like fake teeth, you know, or some other things that are kind of standards in the effects world that I've always wanted to be able to do. Uh, I was I didn't, I didn't have the equipment to do it, and I, I knew basically how it was done. I have a really great bit video from Ken Banks, uh, Ken Banks Tools, great tool maker. Oh, Ken, yeah, Ken Tools, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Ken's Tools. I've been using those forever, and yeah. he's a great guy. And uh, yeah, this he has this video uh, called "Eyes Made Easy." He and another artist uh, put together years ago, and I've had that in my collection for years, and. Just recently, again, with all this time, that was like on my list of projects to tackle, which is make forms for fake eyes. And I knew I could model it in the computer and print it out, and then I could go from there. So I, a couple of weeks ago, I watched his video and took notes on the measurements and, and so forth, and just translated those. They use a lathe and acrylic spheres, you know, where they lathe down the planes and so forth. Yeah, um, but I can model it in the computer and then print it out, and then it's kind of ready to go. And the same with like a base plate, because you have to key the two aspects together. The outer and the inner have to be keyed together so they line up exactly. Um, stuff like that. So it's um, I'm losing track of the question, but, but uh, <laughs> oh, why why would I do that? So a big a big thing that I like to do too is my thinking about making something like eyes is I want to develop a process. So eat like this, this turned out way better than I expected. It's got air bubbles. There's plenty of flaws in it. Yeah. You know, here you can see there's, you know, and I did a sculpted iris. Yeah. That's be um, and that was, done, good you know, to me. there wasn't a lot of care and attention done to it. It was sort of like, well, just, this is a test. I didn't want to spend a lot of time making it perfect. Mm -hmm. um, but even with that, it, you know, I'm, I'm impressed. I thought, wow, it turned out a lot better than I expected. Oh, it looks great. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it, that's just a test. I, I feel like I'm thinking more long term. Like I, I want to be able to make uh, synthetic eyes that look really, really real. Uh, they yeah. look real close up. Yeah. And and why I don't know. You know, is there a practical <laughs> or commercial use for it? I don't. I don't know. Who, who cares? <laughs> a lot of well, a lot of sculptors like to use yeah. cast eyeballs, right? Right off the bat. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, anybody who's making like a, a fake head or something, you know, you want to have a realistic eye in it. So there's there's a right. lot of studios who make really great fake eyes. And uh, yeah, I just it's just something I've always wanted to do and be able to do. So, well, yeah, so this is the first test. I'm going to keep working on it. Um, probably make an iris that's a lot more, you know, uh, studied, I guess, look at close, more closely at references and um, yeah, just really keep developing it. I always like to make little tweaks and improve stuff and just see how good I can get it. If you, if you ever go um, and start with other uh, non-human eyes like octopus or goat or like, you know, those horizontal or, or even yeah. cat or alien looking things, dude, I, I, I would, I'll be your, one of your first customers. I love okay. Yeah. 
yeah, I think eventually I'd like to. It's just a matter, you know, it's it's a matter of how much uh, time I end up spending. I I tend to like get these ideas going, and then I get a result, and then it's like off to the next thing, you know. So yeah, yeah. This this year has been for me uh, having all this downtime. You know, for I think for a lot of artists, ironically, having all this downtime, it's. It's actually like a, a, something of a gift that now you can explore all of this stuff that's been, you know, on the back burner. Right. It's like yeah. you roll that back burner out and it's got like 50 projects on it. That, you know, it's strange. You're like, hey, I'm on project number 30. Like I've actually gotten through a lot of this stuff. So I'm, I'm going to correct you a little bit. It's not downtime. Uh, <laughs> the cut, the fat has been cut. So now you don't have to do all this stuff that you normally would have to do. And yeah, our time. artists have thrived during this time, and this show is a perfect example of that. This is this is why we started this because of, you know, we were locked down and we were doing this anyway. So, let's let's make it happen. So, yeah. Yeah, so, COVID. Oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. This is how far I've gotten. Said no one ever. <laughs> uh, can you give me a summit? Yeah, let, let's go around. Okay, so so Christian, like, show us show us how far <laughs> you you've gotten so yeah. far. I've skinned this. Ooh, this is, this is my kind of alligator look so far. <laughs> so, <laughs> with a, quite an abstract piece. So here. far, so good. <laughs> so I, I'm a novice, and I already know that you have to put the spray bottle on there and and get that uh, get that moisture on there, right? Yeah. I already see you kind of drying out already. <laughs> And if you don't have a spray um, bottle, you can just spit beer at it. That's fine. That's I'm it. Going for a, uh, a, a cry summit, on it. By the way. This is kind Ooh, of our summit brewing. Oh, nice. One of my favorite beers, Minnesota beer. Awesome. I can't wait to. Be, I, I actually I was supposed to go to Minnesota this uh, last year, um, and I uh, was looking forward to having a lot of their craft beer there. So uh, soon, soon enough. They still have it, Mickey. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, according to uh, what we're seeing here on Christian's screen, you, you're not, they haven't run out yet, so you're good. Yes, exactly. Uh, Paul, what, let's let's see what you got going on there. I don't know. I'm trying. There you go. <laughs> Coming together. <laughs> Dude, I don't know. I'll see it at some point. <laughs> if I just yeah. keep scraping away, I'll see what I'm going to do. And uh, Maddie, what do you got? Jesus, oh, that's look at that. I, I jumped ahead because I, I I wanted to see what the scales would start looking like, but uh, but I I I'm not really a big fan of the mouth yet. So right now I just kind of got <laughs> got that scale. reptile nose going. That looks great. So well, yeah, I mean it's uh, I, I'm just trying to picture what the hell a, a reptile's nose looks like, uh, especially one that is is the shape of this. So mm. anyway, oh, well, it's looking very reptilian to me so far. Yeah, he's gonna be he's gonna be a good bisque someday soon. Yeah, right. <laughs> mine, <laughs> mine so far resembles Quagmire from the. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, giggity giggity. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to. Um, I'm trying to look up the. It was oh a thing. I I thought uh, the, uh, from the Marvel comics. Um, oh yeah. I All right. Thing is, didn't it, Mark Mickey? Yeah, I guess, so I guess those, with, with, those yeah. plates. With the plates, right? Exactly. So uh, I like that a lot. So uh, Christian, you were talking about your uh, your movie work or your uh, your kind of um, this type of work that you were doing. Wow, you, Jesus! There's some scales. Don't make it Holy shit. Don't. Yeah, I, I do have some. <laughs> yeah, I need those. So scales. that's mostly what I. That's a big part of what I did on that project. That was with. Uh, an artist here in the Twin Cities, a uh, makeup artist named Chris Ballas. That was his uh, his project, and he had me with a few other artists. Ryan Shadley was on that. And uh, I was part of mostly the sculpture team. So I did a lot of the detail work, a lot of the scales. I mostly did the scales there uh, on the arms wow. and the face. Chris blocked out the face. Keep that on, Nick. Yeah, I'm looking at those scales. Hang on. Let's just know. <laughs> yeah, that was really fun. That was a... That was an adventurous project. That's amazing. So that's a, yeah, it's a full silicone body makeup, a full, wow. full chest and arms and head that Chris did there. Yeah, now, what was, had, was, you know, was that, that for a movie? Movie, Christian? What's that? Is that for a movie? It looks like 
some yeah it was for a production here in, in minnesota i think it's kind of on hiatus i don't think anything ever came of it really oh that sucks so we have cool pictures of the makeup so right yeah i'm happy yeah how did you get into how did you i mean you said you you have a degree in philosophy do they teach mold making in philosophy class yeah they do it uh, school. Not, not exactly <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, I, I, I jumped back and forth. I was into the art stuff and makeup, and and then I went into philosophy. I thought maybe I'd get into the academic world. Um, and then I kind of got back pulled back into the art world and makeup and horror props and things like that. Well, when you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. Yeah, you know, I've, I've been trying to avoid doing this stuff for my whole life, and it just keeps pulling me back. Uh, we'll see where it goes from here. <laughs> ah, yeah, you do great work. Yeah, that's that's insane. Yeah, those are some eyeballs to think about casting. Yeah, some hands. The hands for that uh, makeup. Oh, okay. Uh, Chris and some of his assistants blocked those out, and then I took those to my shop and put the scales on them, and wow, brought them back, and they finished detailing them. They put the webbing in and did some other finishing work, and. So he's he a good former. He's, he's got webbed, webbed fingers. That's good. Is he an aquatic demon? I, well, you know, uh, maybe he's swimming through the flames of hell. I'm oh, not sure. Oh, <laughs> oh. He might be Spoiler part of alert. the cool factor. <laughs> he's swimming through lava. Yeah, right. Exactly. Actually, it's magma. It's all, it's all in the magma the texts there. Thank you, Paul. Sorry. It's magma. You're right. Liquid hot magma. Magma. So yeah, the sculpture part is definitely what I you know gravitate toward when it comes to makeup uh, and effects. I, I've done you know very little. I've done some prosthetic application and things, but uh, and mostly on a student level. I've never really developed that uh, to a professional level. I've I've just focused myself on sculpture and and then fabrication. You know, building displays and things like that with my museum work. I did uh, mold making. I like a lot. I really like trying to get a really nice precise mold made of these things. I kind of think of myself as like a like a lab guy. Like I'm the guy who stays, you know, I'm in the lab. I'm not on I'm not on the set. Uh, nice. You know, I'd rather just stay in a in a basement working with a bunch of people listening to the Ramones sculpting things and making molds <laughs> and whatever. Painting stuff and then handing it off and like, ah, you know, go have fun with it. But I like the monster making part of it. Yeah. Yeah, cheers to that. So there, there's a question in the comments. Uh, we haven't uh, touched on this before, and it's a question that's been asked before, but uh, I think we should definitely uh, uh -oh. uh, revisit it. Uh, do you ever do carvings out of things that can keep longer? I love how the pumpkins and other gores look. Is there any other way to make them last longer? So well, um, that's a that's a softball. Anybody want to field that one? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you can't make them last longer unless you got a really good camera that makes them last forever. You can do things like, uh, you see it in the background there, you can preserve it in a solution of water and some vinegar helps pickle them. Um, you can't shellac them. You can't dehydrate them. Although some people say they can with smaller stuff like apples and whatnot, but for something not so much of this size, but a big pumpkin, I haven't seen any way that you can keep them longer than a year or two if you have a big enough tank. I I had a, a Hubbard squash that I had for almost three years that I just got rid of because I was kind of sick of looking at it. Probably another reason why I don't preserve things or try to <laughs> try to make them last forever because I get sick of looking at them. But a good camera will last forever. Yeah, and you were talking about the uh, molding them. You, you haven't even... You haven't even done that yet or whatever that entails, right? Yeah. yeah no, it sounds like a great idea, though. <laughs> Chris, if I send you a pumpkin, will you mold it for me? I'll all overnight it to you. <laughs> totally. No, no problem. You got to same day it, Paul. Otherwise, it'll be... I'll just drive it to them. Forget it. You know, I think if, if you just got some, you know, they make this life casting silicone material. Uh, Smooth On has a, a product. Um Basically, it's just a rubber goo. If you brush that on there, it sets up really fast, and you just put some plaster bandage behind it. Yeah, that that's, would, that's would Mike Betty carving. Yeah, that's the second time that's been mentioned. Mike Regan said the yeah, same. I think that'd be yeah. worth trying out. What is it called you know, again? The, the other thing is, I you know, 
I was saying uh, life cast. Another life cast. point, you know, you you can then use a material like this, you know, some of these urethanes, you know, where where you can get the color to match, and it will match. You know, you can match it perfectly with the right translucency. It'll look like, you know, it'll have the translucency of the material. My, so you, could, you could make a permanent copy. I mean, it kind of defeats the point on some level, but the my my only confusion with the whole process is because it's wet and because it dehydrates. So you would need something that adheres to a slick surface and sets up relatively fast, right? So yeah. Right. I think the life casting materials would would accomplish that. I don't think that'd be a challenge at all, you know, because they set up in, you know, ten minutes, five minutes, or something. So you would, you would. Co is it a brush on? I'm assuming it's a brush on. Yeah, right? it's like a brush on. Yeah, it's a two part silicone rubber. You mix it together and just brush it on. It sets up, I and mean, that's how we do life casts. So you would do that, and then what? Wait for that to dry, and then just build a mold around it. Yeah, it Before cures. So it cures, and, and it cures in a matter of, you know, they have different products with different settings, so some are much faster. Usually the problem is it sets too fast. You know, you're yeah, trying right. to scramble right. and get it on everything and get the air bubbles away from, you know, areas like the, the nose and so forth. It, right. it cures, then you just put a plaster bandage or some, something, plaster bandage is usually the way to go. Because it's that, again, sets within 10 or 15 minutes. And then uh, you take that off. You take the rubber off, and then you've got a permanent mold. It can be a really simple piece, but like I've done that with pumpkins. I I had some life cast, or I had some fast set uh, brush up silicone rubber, and I had a really cool looking pumpkin a couple of years ago that I just brushed up and did a quick plaster bandage shell on that. And you know, it's it's still sitting in my shop. I mean, I might use it five years from now or something, but I have really? it. It's a captured. So is it a two-part plaster mold? I'm assuming a front and a back, or it's a, it, whatever. Uh, what's a two? So the silicone is two parts, very simple. It's just a one-to-one -one mix. No, I mean, I mean the the plaster mold that goes the over plaster, the outside. You have to do it. Plaster bandage is something you just dip in hot water, so it's a you know it's a plaster impregnated bandage material. You cut off strips. But if you watched anything about life casting, if you looked up a life casting video on YouTube or something, it's pretty. It's it's pretty. Uh, it's fairly simple process, you know. It's it doesn't take a technical masterpiece, or you don't have to be a big technician to to figure to do it. Uh, yeah, you have to have the attention span to watch the entire. <laughs> video. I usually, I usually watch the first five minutes. I skip over all the parts where they need everything, <laughs> then I go to the end and I go, I got it, I got this, and then I waste forty five dollars worth of material. <laughs> it well, like you said, the photos are forever, so maybe maybe photos just. Uh, yeah. But no, I, I do. I haven't molded any of the ones I've done. I don't do anywhere near as many as you guys do. But uh, oh, stop it! You're right. I you, never you, feel like it needs to be preserved, other than on a photograph. You know, the physical object doesn't. That that's our problem. I think what we what we encounter is even the ones where we're not like doing it on the on a fun show like this, where we get kick ass people like you and viewers and all that stuff. That where there's no pressure. When even those when we're we're just doing it at home. With a drink in hand and music playing and all that stuff, I, I never consider those good enough to, to to make permanent. I don't know what it's in my brain. I mean, I some of them I like better than others, but I like Paul and the one he had in his tank forever. It's like I did. I would get tired of looking at it. And I, I swear I'd give it away or throw it away. And like, and I guess there's, there's something to that. People might might want it, but anyway, it's just. Um, I think it's. I do think it's a part hangout. of the, it's it's a part of the charm of carving in a, a gourd or a pumpkin that is a temporary item yeah you know and, and i think that's part of the magic of it because uh to see to see sculpture applied to something that's such a everyday sort of item and an unusual yeah. subject i mean that's what that's what grabbed me about it was, i mean i was really intimidated you know as someone who had years of sculpture experience i was really intimidated to even try it and then once I did, I thought, oh, it's just sculpture. Like I already do sculpture. Up. Like why am I? Why do I think this is such a amazing? But it still <laughs> blows me away whenever I see anybody else's work or whenever I do one. I think like, oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, just because yeah. something's really magical about the temporary material. The medium, yeah, the medium is is kind of where it's at. I think that's why yeah. so many people that that follow us and, and are are amazing uh, constant viewers of this show. Um, and have tried it many times and, and kind of struggle with it like we, we have like 
you know, we, we hate and love most of them. I'd say hate pr probably leads a lot of it. Uh, <laughs> we'll love, love some of them. But, um, but the, the medium is the fun part for all of I mean, to me, you know, when you, when you talk about, and we've said this before, when you talk about the journey of, of creativity, if you're, if you're in it and you're, and you're just loving that process and, you know, you're, you're going to get to an end result, but the whole part of starting with nothing and coming with finishing with something, um, when it comes to play, to me, it's like reading a novel where we're reading a comic book, you know, we're, so, so I, 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 when I say that, I mean, like, if you have like a piece of clay and you can cover it up and walk away from it for a week and come back and it's exactly the same where, you know, the clock's ticking with us as soon as you start carving into this thing, even if you refrigerate it, it, it starts to degrade like any piece of, yeah. you know, produce wood, even if it's in the fridge. So I, I, the part that I think I've always loved about the medium is that it's, uh, that it's so temporary. Um, but so just being in the moment while you're making it, knowing that it's uh, going to look absolutely different. When you're finished, when I finish, Paul can test this, when we're finished with them, when our pictures are done, they're dead to us. And now this thing is, yeah. is it, I'm going to let it sit and, and dry out for a couple of days, come back, look at it and go, oh, God, that thing sucks. And, you know, um, <laughs> or, 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 you know, chop it up, give it to the animals, whatever. But, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of a, a fun place uh just to let go of it actually yeah and i, and I don't know if you, if you do i don't know if do you guys do any clay sculpture have you been in that world at all or because I, I, it is, the, the contrast i think is interesting it's uh because there is a, a, I do. there's always a challenge with with the clay stuff uh one of the challenges is to know when to stop and when to let go you know, oh, that's yeah. really difficult for me i tend to go back and work and rework stuff and I can overwork stuff. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> that is stomach turning. Well done. Thanks. That that's is. A, yeah. That's a, that's a wet clay sculpture <laughs> I did many years ago oh, in a latex oh copy there. He's got a runny nose. I, you know, get a, get a clean <laughs> he's got a lot. He's got a runny lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. I called that guy kissing Carl. <laughs> oh, that is great. Oh, that eyeball, too. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is something else. Now, how did you do you do a lot of airbrush work when you paint this stuff? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do a lot of airbrush and uh, I well. like I like just using, uh, you know, standard brushes and, and acrylics with uh, glazes and stuff like that. Wow. Um, I try to throw as many painting techniques as I can. I don't paint as much as I, I'd like to, and it's something I'd like to improve on. Um, and I, I really want to get into doing more silicone paint work. Uh, I've done very, very little. and uh, But yeah, I plan on doing a lot of silicone work in the next few years. So that's something I'm going to try to develop. That's awesome. Very cool. But then I, I don't know if you have any of the pictures. I, I did a bunch of uh, monsters and stuff at the beginning of 2020. I got a job working at a place called Fright Props. One of my, and they're a local company, and I'm friends with uh, their creative director, Scott Beavis, is a great guy, and he really loves crazy monsters. And mm. this is the crushed head for uh, for Wrong Turn, the Wrong Turn 2021 that's out now. Wow! Oh my God! So we started we started with a like uh, a clay pour, we call it a clay copy of, and I think a local actor. Um, and then I transformed it into something that looked within the range of the actor in the film, which is the one at the bottom. And then it was a process of trying to figure out, well, what, what would a natural crushed head look like? I did look at a lot of pictures of crushed heads, which oh, you did. depressing, but, uh, How'd that go? you know, <laughs> I'm a little, I'm somewhat desensitized to that kind of thing. Um, well, I just look at it as an object. I don't really think about the tragedy of it too much. Yeah. But he didn't drink I, before he looked at it. I can't help it. I do feel bad, you know, <laughs> seeing this stuff. I try not to be totally desensitized about it, but, but yeah, it's like a technical exercise. And, and this was a really, this was pretty quick, but, you know, I, I like to take a good amount of time on stuff. And this was a couple days, I think, you know, to get this, this look. Wow. So I didn't really get into like the, the level of anatomy detail that maybe I, you know, I would if I had the time, but, uh, <laughs> but it was a it, it turned out pretty effective, I think, and uh, the final piece 
looks pretty gruesome. Yeah. And yeah, especially all painted up and, and, uh, yeah, she was, yeah. Haired and everything with blood on and it. Did, and, the, and did you, did you, did you show was, I guess, part of the movie and the effects and stuff, it's, you know, that's the cut scene before something lands on his head. Um, did, did they show, they show the actual, um, you know, finished piece of blood, blood and everything. Uh, they, uh, it's, it's a cutaway. And then this is the result, you know, where the, all, all of his friends see him with this, okay. it's a giant tree log that's been, that's rolled Ooh. down a hill at this group of people that are hiking. Yikes. And this guy gets caught between a tree and this giant log and squished. <laughs> and so the, the final effect, you know, I did the sculpture and helped with the mold and then Ryan and the other people on the team, they did the, the casting and painting and, uh, another person did the hair work and, uh, a lot of wow. a lot of work on set, which I wasn't involved in, but yeah, wow. And I think there was even some digital overlay. I think they augmented the piece a little bit. Oh some, no, you must have been pissed. Yeah, you know, I, if I have a picture of a cool, if I get to do a fun sculpture, this you know, I had a day job at this time. This was in 2019, so I was delighted just to be a part of the project. And and Ryan was really gracious and gave me a lot of freedom to make these decisions and design it and so forth. Well, it came out amazing. Yeah. Thanks. I've seen, yeah, it was, I've it was seen fun. a couple of things you've done that bring me right back to the thing. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. It, yeah. Some of the stuff you've done is mind-boggling. I can't figure out if you were commissioned to do it or if that actually came out of your head. Because it's just like, <laughs> wow. If it, if it did, you know, it spoke somebody. to me. Yeah. This is a, a zombie sculpture I did for a company called Savage Silicone. Oh, nice. So they're they're starting up doing a, a line of silicone masks and this is going to, I don't even think we have a painted one quite yet. He's got the mold and he's got a cast. Hmm. So any day now there should be a painted copy on his website or his Instagram and so forth. Um, yeah, this was a lot of fun. It was a challenge. I hadn't done a silicone mask before. And uh, the challenge is you have a form underneath uh, kind of like a life cast that's been shaved yeah. down yeah. and you're really limited in how thick you can make the sculpture. So I tried to keep it, you know, reasonably thin, but get, you know, some good impact and character in it. And I, you know, I just threw a bunch of stuff at it and just tried things. And it's a lot of trial and error. You know, it's not working at a point. You just keep messing with it. And eventually it starts to, it starts to come to come alive. I follow a lot of mask makers. I know, I know that the, the, when you're doing a silicone or a latex mask that um, you're actually pulling over a form the, the molding process is very, very different than when you're just doing a, a cast or something, right? Because you have to have that fit the internal structure and look exactly the right way on the external structure. So there's more parts to the molding process, right? Yeah, this this is it's almost like doing a prosthetic. Like you're essentially doing a full head prosthetic, but it's generic. If that makes I don't know if that oh, makes okay. sense. Okay, so the person uh, underneath is 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 irrelevant whatever. because we're not gluing it to them. Is that yeah. what you mean by generic? Yeah, it's that it's a it's you know it's not made to a to a individual actor, but it's okay. it's made to fit un as universal as possible. Okay. Um, so you try to keep it thin, you know. Whereas a latex mask, you know, you might have a life cast, but you can go crazy because you're just going to get a cast of the exterior. Ah, okay. Whereas this has got the interior. It's got the thick whatever, however thick the clay is. That's how thick the piece is going to be. So you uh, really have to be conscientious about that when you're doing oh, this. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, so it was a challenge, and it took me a while. I, I kind of noodled around for on it for a while, but um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm real happy with it. I did the teeth are 3D. I did 3D printed teeth on it, so uh, if I was just 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 did some generic teeth, so he has a mold of those, and uh, those will be plastic teeth that get glued onto the silicone. Yeah. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to how that turns out. Yeah, really super impressive. That was great. Uh, I wanted to go back to uh, another one. So, uh, so we have about 15 minutes left. Uh, ah, but I, but I, yeah, it, I told you it goes fast. And uh, uh, but I wanted to make mention of this one. Uh, wow. And, uh, <laughs> Mickey, is that you? I, I yeah, it, it it's, it's it's so impressive, <laughs> and it, and it's like I, again. All of these other ones have been super elaborate, a lot of detail. 
this one is uh would be considered plain but i think it's it's so striking um, yeah, yeah. but you have an interesting story behind this one correct yeah that was that was done for uh tom spina uh who does uh i'm blanking on the name of his, his studio but he does all these replicas and star wars figures i mean it's he does all this amazing he does a he fixes old props he went through a lot of the bob burns collection of like the american world from london and rick baker's mm -hmm. wolf and wow. fixed up all the rotting uh foam rubber i mean he does incredible stuff and he was really nice enough to uh to bring me in on this project it was a, it was for an advertisement display i think like a uh um like a trade show booth and so they were going to have this character that had to advertise these glasses and so i had some reference pictures of uh a model or an actor or somebody in the shop if you who it was and uh it was it was real challenging to try to find the, the expression that they wanted um I, yeah, I love doing this. It was a really fun sculpture to do. And I, I, I really, I'm drawn to like classical sculpture. I'd, I'd like, I like to do this kind of work and I, I'd like to do, uh, you know, I like to do this kind of subtle expressive, you know, busts and characters and so forth. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, they, I think the expression, it was just really difficult. The art direction was hard to figure out from the client, um, what exactly they wanted. You know, with sculpture, it can be a little—it can be a little frustrating when uh, someone's asking you to tweak your your work and change the expression, or you know, yeah. the feedback. I I wasn't enjoying that much myself, but mm -hmm. Tom was great, and he was he was very uh, patient and gracious about it all. But I eventually just made a, a really like large smile on the guy, which I wasn't as happy with the final piece as I was with it at this stage. But you know, it's a commercial project; it's not, it's not an art piece. Uh, really you know it's for a trade show booth so it's like uh if you can sneak some art in there sometimes uh, you can get away <laughs> with it and sometimes you can't <laughs> and they'll catch you and you know or whatever they just don't have the same idea or what have you wow it's it is great is that i've gotten a lot of good feedback on from that that particular picture and that that phase of the piece which i felt yeah i felt good about it and i think it it did convey a kind of a subtlety it's yeah, such an interesting uh, expression as well. That's it's not it's like smug, yeah. it's like in between expressions, which is yeah. If there's even a thing, like it's it's, yeah, it's really to be sort of a pensive, you know, questioning type look. It totally, totally oh, nailed so it, and it wasn't used. That's the beauty of it. <laughs> well, the final was, and you know, the final. Had the final it, was, had yeah. Appeal, but I, this was my favorite uh, stage of it, anyways. Yeah, and. Um, just one of the things uh, I one of the things I think is really amazing about sculpture, or I'm sure illustrators have the same experience, but for me, you know, uh, I'll have to kind of find it. You know, I, I have some technical, I have technical abilities, and I, you know, I've been working on sculpture for a long time, but it's not a straight linear process where. I'm just starting off with a block of clay and I do all the measurements and then here I res I ra arrive at this. There's a point where where it's blocked out and it, and then you start to see what it could be. It's almost like this weird other qual I don't even know how to describe it but you just get a sense of like okay this is where it needs to be dug in. You can just feel where that it's like you have a vision of the final once you get it to a certain point. That's what always works for me is it's like the the first seventy five percent of the sculpture is kind of like a, a slog, but then once I get it to this point, something else takes over, and I can start to understand like, okay, this is where I need to pull the lips in or change the eyes a little bit, and it all of a sudden it kind of comes alive. Yeah, yeah, oh, a hundred percent. I not it's the first three quarters of anything that I do, I'm like, I should just throw it in the trash. Yeah, it's like this. Sucks. And then something it's just. <laughs> oh, there it is. Hey, where you been? That's what I think people will be surprised by is, is even a lot of us who have, you know, a pretty good amount of experience. Um, every time I take something on, there's that point where I just think, I, I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no business doing this. Pretty almost every sculpture is like that. Mm -hmm. And then you just kind of keep forcing yourself to do it. And you just like, you have to have the faith that it will come together. And, it's so and eventually, true. amazingly, it does. And then it's like, oh, now it's easy. Now it just starts to kind of sculpt itself. And, yeah. Yeah, I, think, I wonder how many people favorite. almost like stop because they they have that same feeling that a lot of us have, like that those doubts and so forth. 
you know, part of like getting to a level where you're really making stuff that uh, is compelling is to just be able to like suffer through that self doubt and that or that seventy five percent stage. Mm -hmm. So you funny know, that I think see it to the everybody, end. everybody says that. I feel like if you yeah. don't, if there is no self doubt, if you are not nervous or unsure a lot of the time, then how are you ever going to get any better? You should always be flirting with that line, like you said. What am I doing? I, I don't even know how to get to this next phase right. of this thing. How, and not, how do I not understand what I'm doing right now? But how did yeah, how did why did I start this? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I lost it. I've lost it all. I don't yeah. know what I'm doing anymore. It's over. I, I can't tell you how many projects that I'm very proud of and in my portfolio and such. The process to get there was almost at every one. There was some stage where I just said, I have no idea what I'm doing. I need to find a whole new another profession. Wow. <laughs> Somehow That's I faked my way to this point, and now the the jig is up. You know, the, I'm I'm caught. Yep. <laughs> uh, that's all of us. Yeah. I mean, that's, but that's now I'm at a right point now. where I just accept that. I just know. Oh, that's the feeling. That's what happens, and just keep doing it. Eventually, it'll it'll work. So I, 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 I contend that maybe after you're, twenty you're years, you get to that point where you're like, oh yeah, it's. It's a, it's it's a horror show of self doubt, and then you get to this one stage, and it just all comes together, and it's easy. Yep. So, right. I, I, I agree with you. I think the only people who don't fake it till they make it, there's probably like surgeons. Um, <laughs> yeah, you don't pilot, want them. No pilot, self doubt. Maybe I you know people who have amazing training and and actually are, are are really good at their trade. Then you get everybody else on earth who just like fake it. You know, <laughs> What, what is the what, what is the cliche about artists that they all have oh imposter syndrome right and so the idea is well everyone thinks of themselves as an imposter when they're not I sort of think maybe we are all imposters but it doesn't really matter because yeah. everyone's an imposter on some level yeah. and eventually we figure There's it all right. out and yeah few people get to see the process like you I think the one thing that's yeah. fascinating about this show is we actually get to see the process you know you get to see how things come to be but most times you know, people just see the Instagram post or the the final result of whatever it is. They don't see what went into it. All the 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 years of of uh, uh, you know trial and error and mistakes yeah, sure. and, and and progress. So um, yeah, and don't the... forget countless f bombs in between. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of these. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Lenora actually said to me. Uh, on the last one, she goes, I don't think I've ever heard you swear so much. On a, and I, I'm downstairs. And she could hear me constantly just typing them out, striping them. I'm almost worried for the last few years, I, I don't have the level of anxiety and self-doubt that I used to. And I think I'm getting soft. I'm, I'm going to stop improving if I don't Rat beat row. myself up on every project. But <laughs> I'm taking a break. I'm taking a break for a few years from crippling self-doubt i'm just gonna yeah. make this stuff and whatever well, what, what are the yeah, terms starving artists <laughs> tortured artists you know it's all yeah. it, you know self-tortured artist is right. self torture yes yeah. 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 Exactly. self-inflicted <laughs> but there's some artists out there that you know they don't think that they're uh they they think they're the greatest and you know i think they're just not, hiding it they just they're not yeah. as public well, they're as better at hiding it than anybody else yeah that that's that's probably the truth they're great I mean, actors. little 3d printed stuff uh I could show too since yeah, we're, nice. we're getting close it. to yeah. the end, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Um, here's this. Here's a skull. Oh. That I did. Whoa. And obviously Whoa. the jaw moves. It's That's... got a little. It just got the rubber band on there to keep the jaw. But this is this is a this was like a test subject I modeled in ZBrush, and I got a resin printer, which have become amazingly uh, fairly affordable, a couple hundred bucks. Oh, wow. Really? Um, so I was. This is a print, a three D oh, print, oh. a resin print of a ZBrush model. And uh, Paul's yeah, this really it. like knocked me out. Here. I thought like, oh my god, this is a whole nother world. I'm this is Don't actually really fun. So my my Luddite thing has died since I got a resin printer. Don't Here's tell me that old sculpture I did. That's unbelievable. Wow. This was a character sculpture I did for Split Rock Studios. Uh, oh, wow. One of the characters. It's in a museum display in uh, Washington D.C. at the uh, the basement of the Ford's Theater where Lincoln was shot. Nope. There's a bunch of characters around, and I I got to do all these uh, crazy expressive characters. But that was my favorite one. Um, wow! Yeah, there's a little wolf skull I did. Again, it's got this, this on there. But another study in ZBrush, and that's printed on my resin printer. 
but you know, it's like, uh, oh, that's so cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Because you shouldn't have said they were affordable. I'll never sculpt again. You'll just see my turn <laughs> running in the back. You'll just see this, this guy. This is a thing I was thinking about making. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Mini ones. By pumpkins, guys. Oh, wow. a figure of it. You know, so know at some point I might make these available on Etsy or something. This yeah, little, there's a pendant you can wear. Uh, or that's beautiful. Whatever. But yeah, look at that. Whoa. <laughs> now, awesome. you were developing hands as well, weren't you? I thought I saw yeah, hands I going up. Yeah, I did. Actually, I have this one here. This is. Uh, there you go. Oh, wow. Yeah, look this at was that. a lot of fun. This was a cool oh, that articulation. That gesture is awesome. Yeah, I wanted to get a really like, crazy look. And I, I do the four fingers. This is some weird. Thing with uh, the pumpkins in my brain there's only uh, pumpkins only have four fingers so <laughs> i don't know why but apparently they only have they only have four fingers it's science yeah. that's all it's exactly. science. so this actually the, this one or the other one was scanned and that's how i got the hands on this guy wow you know so this is the original this is a urethane cast from the you know the sculpture was this scale and i can print them out at any scale now and Supposedly, the cartoons, that's why they have four fingers. It's because it's easier to draw. Is it? Yes. Well, it was one less finger to sculpt. That's so it. I, yeah. It, it's yeah, actually, I might have yeah. <laughs> a couple minutes there. So then it must be true. It must be true. Yeah. I, I imagine <laughs> what three fingers is like. I mean, God, imagine how productive you could be. <laughs> well, you, know well, you, 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 you already have an Etsy uh, crowd, so get those up there. Uh, People will buy there them. You. There's three of them in this room right here that'll buy them as well. Great. Okay. okay. Well, the price just went up. Sorry to tell you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, don't I showed my hand. Now. <laughs> I'm only I'm only gonna I'm only gonna lose five dollars a piece this time. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that material's expensive, isn't it? I think that was the thing originally when I was gonna get a 3D printer was the the amount of material and time it takes for it to print. It was like, yeah, so if I wanted to print a chess piece, it was going to be 16 bucks. And if the oh. thing screwed up, I was in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. The material is is fairly affordable. Like, you know, a, a print like the skull, I mean, this might be a dollar fifty in resin oh, you know, right. or so. It's hollowed out. But I find that the biggest uh, expense, I guess, it's a, it's very time consuming. It's a lot of, uh, a lot of troubleshooting, a lot of troubleshooting and, you know, it's like any new technical subject. There's a whole bunch of stuff to learn. Oh, the FEP thing and how you get that, the film on the tray and you oh, know, yeah. how do you get the, is the timing right and the resin exposures to and your UV, but all this stuff you got to do and figure out. But so, yeah, it's very time consuming. And then the, the other thing I always want to say when it comes to 3D printing is a lot of people focus on the printers, right? But I always tell people that the real magic is the software. Even if you don't have a 3D printer, I think the thing to do is learn how to do like stuff in a, a CAD program, like like Fusion 360, which I think is free for students and non-commercial use. You can at least learn the basics. And then uh, you know something like ZBrush, one of the other, you know, I think there's there's more affordable modeling programs out there. But that's really where to me that's the thing to focus on, like. The 3D printers, you know, eventually it's a machine you get and it realize, but having, being able to have that model and manipulate it, change it, you know, do uh, various iterations as you're developing something, to me, that's the real magic of it. Mm. Well, sure. And uh, the, oh, go ahead, Paul. No, go ahead. Um, I, there's actually, I, not a lot of people know this, but Photoshop actually has 3D built into it and you can output 3d models from photoshop and uh in all these different uh types like you could do it in uh i think it's like this resin or you know they have a whole bunch of things that they, they can put it out including silver and gold like the but the gold ones were like going for like to print it would be like thousands of dollars obviously but you could do it out Fair of well. photoshop very very um hmm. unknown thing that uh so there's there's actually a lot of avenues to do like 3d printing that you wouldn't even know about hey wow. no matter what win or lose smooth on wins you know in this whole thing it's <laughs> smooth on, yeah, it's smooth on so damn much for all this stuff to try it yep big urethane runs it all that's really yeah big that's urethane. Urethane. Exactly. Big urethane big silicone is running the show 
Yeah. I like smooth on products a lot. They're, uh, they're good. Yeah. They, they, you know, they're, uh, whatever you can say, but one, th one thing I'd say good about smooth on is, uh, it's very clear how to, it's very user friendly as far as the mixing ratios and the instructions yeah. and so forth. Yeah, I agree. From what it's I've nice used place to start off for sure. I mean, there's a lot of other companies that make, make great materials and you got to kind of explore it all, but. Yeah, so let's let's go around the room because uh, we're about to wrap up. Uh, let's start with you, Paul. Let me. Uh, Mine looks exactly here. the same, pretty much. I'm. Still, <laughs> I'm uh, there's different avenues or roads that I'm afraid to go down just yet. It's just yeah. like Chris said earlier. I, you got to keep. I got to keep hating it for a little while, and then something's going to give her. I'm like, all right, this is the direction I'm going. I have like two or three different directions I can go in, but. It's got some time. There's a little, there's quite a bit to go. And uh, when it's done, hopefully I won't be mad at it. <laughs> what do you got, you Matt? Drop, drop some extra F bombs. Here's my little friend so Jesus, far. Man, almost done. Wow, that looks great. Well, I keep, I keep like, over focusing on all the, the, the scales. I, I mean, I don't know how he's all going to turn out at the end. I just was like, so, like, how do I make him reptilian? And to me, the only thing is scales, but I'm sure there's, other ways but yeah so right now he's I trying to have my whole hard thing is trying to have any kind of expression on usually a expressionless face so i'm like messing with his mouth and anyway it'll it'll be something yeah it looks, it, it looks like one of the cantina hey. characters in star wars or uh exactly oh, yeah. Yeah. very rick bakery yes yeah it looks great you already got the character happening yeah exactly <laughs> Very, very cool. He, he's a he's a he's the angriest Slee stack, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Christian. I'm, big, I'm big reveal. The, I, I don't know what I, I don't know why I have no business in sculptures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was thinking kind of like an alligator type shape, but yeah, oh, I, I love had, it. I haven't been able to focus on it, but That's I was gonna say if you just kept it at the uh, what it was before, uh, I think somebody said it. I can't remember. I wish I could credit him. They said it was Cobra Commander. Just that. Yeah. That, well, that, oh, the funny, the funny, funny. Still, right. still, I haven't, I haven't closed off any avenues. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a masterpiece. You just have to check my Instagram in a week. There yeah. you go. Yeah, exactly. Same here. Yeah. So we'll Nine be posting them and seconds. Look at there, those. there's your skulls that I was. You were right on topic. You were showing the skulls and everything. Yeah, my um, mini skulls. Here's one of them. I've got. So cool. That's about. That's how big those those are. Yeah. Okay. This Super cool. Oh, the baby oh, skulls are black heart models. <laughs> so um, this is where you can find uh, Christian on Instagram. Is there anywhere where else that we can find your stuff? And you said, do you have an Etsy store? I don't. I don't have any. That's all Instagram. That's that's my that's me. So okay. follow my Instagram and like and tell me uh, wonderful things and send me <laughs> messages. Ask me any questions. I don't get enough questions. I have all these artist friends who say, oh, I'm bombarded with questions. I think, well, send me a question. Nobody's sending me any questions. <laughs> Watch what you so, ask for. Right? Yeah, send it. <laughs> I, love, I love to talk to other artists and people who love art and uh, what have you. And me, I'm a very fan. I'm a big fan of that subject. So, Do you yeah. have, um, and you have another site just for your um, petrified pumpkins, right? Yes. Yes, I do. I, I believe it's petrified underscore pumpkins. On okay. Instagram. Okay. Now, are you going to fairly inactive since the fall? But uh, there's all this stuff and lots of little videos I made to promote uh, Jack Illusions and the Petrified Pumpkins last year. Is that going to be something we can get our hands on this fall? I hope. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'm anticipating quite a busy year doing uh, a lot of medical simulation stuff. And uh, oh, cool. We'll see. You will see. But I, I'm, I'm, I love Halloween. I love pumpkins. And I love pumpkin carving. And I. Something, something's going to happen there. The dam's going to break. Stay tuned. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah. Right on. Well, this is where you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch. Um, Paul, did you have anything that you wanted to plug? Yeah, follow this guy. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Very talented. And, and everybody uh, else, if you're not following us already, I mean... You know, follow Hopper Sculpture, follow Mon Dragon Design, follow Dever Customs, follow everything. Just hit the yes. like button everywhere you go. Yeah. Easiest way, easiest and free way to support us. 
Uh, Matt, do you have anything? What, what Paul said, just rewind the tape and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are we on tape now? Yeah, I think so. It's uh, it's all <laughs> it's all analog anymore. Let me just say, I really I really appreciate you guys bringing me on. It's it's very flattering, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, oh, it, it was, was a pleasure, pleasure to have you. Ours. Yeah. Pleasure was ours. Really appreciate yeah. it. Absolutely. No, I, I have to have you, you back. Um. Yeah, and we will be back next Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific time and 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, with another Carvers and Creator. So we'll see you next time. Good night, everyone. Take care. Cheers. See you guys.